JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for July the 22nd. I am Harald Lambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar continued to trade lower against uh, all the other digital currencies on Tuesday and during the Asian morning Wednesday. It lost uh, the most ground versus uh, the Aussie, NOC, SEC and the Kiwi in that order, while it underperformed uh, the list against uh, the yen, the pound, the Canadian dollar. The weakening of uh, the safe havens uh, dollar and yen combined with the strengthening in the risk-linked uh, Aussie and Kiwi suggests that uh, financial markets continue trading in a risk on fashion. Indeed, uh, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that major EU indices closed in positive territory, while in the US both the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 0.60 and 0.17% respectively. The exception was uh, Nasdaq, which slid 0.81% as investors uh, sold the, spectac the spectacular uh, tech rally that led the index to a new record yesterday. The relatively upbeat investor morale rolled uh, somewhat over into the Asian session today as well. Although Japan's Nikkei fell 0.52%, uh, <coughs> China's Shanghai Composite is up 0.87%. Following uh, headlines of progress, EU leaders finally managed to secure a deal over a 750 billion, uh, billion euros recovery fund to support the coronavirus hit economies which uh, may have been one of the main drivers behind the latest improvement in risk appetite alongside positive news with regards to vaccine trials. Although as we noted yesterday both the bulls and the bears have ample reasons to jump into the action, it seems that those who believe in a faster than previously thought economic recovery are uh, having the upper hand at, uh, at the moment, despite both the infected cases and deaths from the coronavirus accelerating again yesterday. In our view, the next catalyst for the broader investor appetite may be the US Congress's decision over a new fiscal relief package, with less than two weeks to go before the extended unemployment aid for millions of Americans expires. Republicans and Democrats remained far apart yesterday on how much to spend, with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi saying that the one trillion US dollars package proposed by the Republicans is not sufficient. With that in mind, any final decision above that number may add further fuel to the broader optimism and perhaps lift stocks and other risk-linked assets higher. Consequently, the safe havens uh, dollar, yen and franc are likely to stay pressured. Now, as for today, the most important data point on the calendar is Canada's uh, CPIs for June. The headline rate is forecast to have rebounded to plus 0.3% year-over-year from minus 0.4%, while no forecast is available for the core rate, which in May stood at 0.7%. That said, with the year-over-year -year rate in WTI improving during the month of uh, June, if uh, the headline rate is set to rebound as uh, much as the forecast suggests, the core one is likely to rise by less. In any case, uh, at last week's gathering, the Bank of Canada kept its policy unchanged, and although officials noted that the interest rates will stay untouched until the 2% inflation target is sustainably achieved, they added that they stand ready to adjust their programs if market conditions change. With uh, retail sales for May rebounding by less than expected yesterday, it may need a decent improvement in inflation for uh, Bank of Canada officials to stay comfortably on the sidelines for another gathering. With regards to the broader outlook of the loonie, we remain somewhat positive, especially after yesterday's jump in uh, oil prices to a new, uh, new four-month uh, high. 
That said, we prefer to exploit any further uh, cut gains against the safe haven uh, currencies like the US dollar and the yen, which tend to underperform during periods of market optimism. Now, as for the rest of today's events, apart from Canada CPIs, we also get the Energy Information Administration weekly report on crude oil inventories for last week. The forecast is for a 2.088 million barrels uh, slide after a 7.493 million uh, tumble the week before. But uh, bearing in mind that the American Petroleum Institute report revealed a 7.544 million barrels inventory built, we would consider the risks surrounding the Energy Information Administration forecast as tilted to the upside. The US existing home sales for June are also coming out and the consensus is for a 24.5% uh, month-over-month rebound after a 9.7% slide in May. We also have one speaker on today's agenda and this is, once again, ECB Vice President Luis de Guindos. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of uh, the week uh, much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.